This right here is a $6 PCIe riser cable that I got delivered with postage included off of Amazon. However, it didn't really say anything about the specifications, nor did it say anything about the speeds. And if you're probably thinking, well, Brian, is the cheapest PCIe riser cable, is that gonna be okay if I wanna say flip a gaming PC and I've got a case that supports a vertical mount for a graphics card? Well, have no fear because in a recent parts hunt, I actually came into a case that I got for a very good price. It was a Thermaltake View 31, and that had the option to vertically mount a graphics card. And in this video, a lot of you guys said you should just buy a PCI riser cable. And when you go to resell that computer, that will hopefully attract a buyer even more than it would by just having the graphics card in the standard horizontal configuration. However, it got me thinking, well, is that person going to lose any performance? And if so, how much? And is it going to present any problems on an older architecture? Well, in today's video, we've tested out two different graphics cards. We've got a GTX 970 and also a GTX 980 Ti that we tested it on the newer platform, that being the 12th generation Intel. And we also tested it on a third generation Intel Ivy Bridge motherboard, a budget one that I picked up from the junk store. So in today's video, we'll get those performance numbers done, but also if it ends up checking out, then I've definitely got myself a safe and reliable budget PCIe riser cable that I can use for future PC flips. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and we're going to be testing out this budget riser cable with the Ivy Bridge motherboard first. And we came into a problem actually, and that is that the cable itself is actually not that long. It's uh, about 19 centimeters in total, and the ribbon itself is only really about 16 centimeters. So if you're looking for a longer ribbon, definitely go with another choice. And this actually limited us in how much room we could mount in the case, where I actually had to use the second motherboard slot and then that reduced the speeds down to PCI Express 2.0 X4 on this particular motherboard, which is a gigabyte. And what happened here was after we did the test, we actually came into numbers surprisingly very similar to that of mounting the graphics card in the top slot. And so what this meant was the top slot was running at PCI 3.0 X16, and this bottom slot with the riser was running at PCI 2.0 X4, so massive difference in terms of bandwidth available for the graphics card, but the riser cable with the GTX 970 still managed to give out pretty solid performance. It was nothing to worry about, but one thing that I was actually surprised with was that all the numbers, especially in Apex Legends, this is one game that I do pay particular attention to since it is actually pretty well optimized and the game really doesn't have any 1% or 0.1% low heavy stuttering even in clutch situations. And what I found was when I tested for instance a 6500 XT in the past on PCI X4, that actually had some real big issues with stuttering in Apex Legends. When it came to the GTX 970, it, it suffered no problems at this particular PCIe bandwidth, which means that I think the 6500 XT, if you're gonna go out and buy one of those newer graphics cards, it has problems inherent to the graphics card before we even connect it to a motherboard. As opposed to a GTX 970, that's not gonna suffer from using a cheap cable like this. But you may be wondering, okay, Brian, what if we uh, put it on a 12th generation motherboard with PCIe 4.0 X16? And this is where the cable actually started reporting that it was PCIe 3.0 x16 so the cable itself will support that full specification except it won't support pci 4.0 so don't try to run it at that but here's where we tested out the 980 ti with the 12900k and we got pretty much no difference in the numbers the only differences that you'll see here in the five games that we tested ranging from fortnite going through to apex legends and then going through to dungeons 3 Panzer Corps 2 and also Anvil show that these cables, even the cheap ones, end up being okay. Now, of course, it's not the best looking cable. In fact, you can pay a lot more money and get a all black sleeved cable that is not sort of flappy at the end. This one, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's kind of got this cheap plastic surrounding it, 
But I mean, for $6, it's definitely the price performance king of riser cables if you're looking to get something that'll just work and it'll give you 16X PCI 3.0. Though I decided to also throw in some uh, synthetic benchmarks just in case the FPS numbers aren't convincing enough. And here's where we'll get a GPU score with the 980 Ti on the 12th generation motherboard and that showed no performance difference and in fact even the gtx 970 running at pca 2.0 x4 didn't show a whole lot of a difference either then with all those numbers aside we now have the verdict on the cheap pca riser cable for six dollars delivered and i'd say the performance is fine i came into absolutely no problems and the numbers speak for themselves so it's going to make a great choice for someone on a budget to get those aesthetics pumped up on a build. But speaking of aesthetics, it does have this uh, gray, light gray ribbon cable and the ends are blue and it does feel a little bit tacky. And of course the length of the cable itself may be an issue for you if you're running it from your top slot and the case, for instance, the View 31 that we used here today does have quite a long run to get to that vertical mount. But those two things aside, if you manage to hide the cable and the run isn't that long in your case, then it will make for a great value option, one that I'll definitely be checking out and using in future builds if the case supports vertical mounting. So there it is, cheap cable, it does the job, but of course, if you're going for something high-end, like say an RX 6000 series graphics card or an RTX uh, 3000 series graphics card, then you might just want to grab a PCIe 4.0 and spend a few extra dollars when you're going with the high-end stuff. Me testing it with these 980 Ti's and 970's, that's exactly where I'm gonna be using these budget riser cables to keep the cost down on a ready low budget build. So hopefully this video has helped and served you well if you're looking for some kind of information on some of these cheap PCA riser cables. If it does, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below, have you had any horror stories with PCA riser cables? Love reading your thoughts and opinions because I know with certain uh, riser cables in the past, I actually have had some uh, problems where either the computer wouldn't boot properly or of course uh, things would glitch out and the PC would crash. So I was glad to see that this cheap cable here was just no frills and it did the job. Anyhow guys, do let us know in the comments section below. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from 30 and they asked Brian, how do you think this compares to your old workhorse, the 1680 V3, 4.6 gigahertz? That video you featured it against an i9 and Ryzen and was always the gateway video introduced your channel to other people. So basically they're talking about the 18 core Xeon that we actually did a budget video editing rig with and that thing ended up being really good. The only drawback I guess would have been the maximum uh, core single and both all core boosts on that budget 18 core Haswell V3 Xeon. Though that aside, I think when it comes to video editing and especially as a workstation, the 1680, it was actually the V2, the Ivy Bridge 8 core 16 thread Xeon that we used. That was a very good CPU. And in fact, I got to the stage where my workflow just ended up maxing that CPU out. And it's a heavy 4K workload. Like I work through my video editing I'd say, I don't know if it's quick or not, but I just try to smash through it. Um, RTS sort of mouse, I go through it, snap, 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 snap. And so I need something that will respond and give me the maximum performance possible. So I'm looking for not just a snappy experience, but I'm also looking for something that'll plow through the work as well. And I found when I upgraded later on, I got an 18 core, I think it was a 7980XE, and that was pretty much the best that I've had to this date. And now I'm using the 12900K, and it actually feels like in some ways, even though it's faster in certain things, it actually feels like it's actually not as snappy as the 18 core, which wasn't as snappy as the 1680 V2. So there seems to be a lot of trade-offs when it comes to workflow and using uh, bigger core CPUs and even the latest and greatest stuff that uses DDR5, feels like even though the uh, maximum performance can be a lot better in certain situations, it feels like some of the minor details can be lost, especially due to latency. I do notice these things, but overall in the end, the 1680 V2, especially if you wanna do video editing, it's gonna be a great CPU even in 2022. Though I think you just can't get a CPU that is the best at absolutely everything. And the best analogy I can give you is in the world of cameras, you've got a camera and you want a camera that'll do it all, 
but you can't get that camera. Basically, there's no camera that's gonna give me the best image stabilization, the best battery life, and also the best shifting autofocus, and even having no shutter roll off. That's just not gonna happen in the world of cameras. So you've always got your trade-offs. You just have to make sure at the end of the day, whether it's price or performance, you're getting the best product in the end that suits you. And that's the great thing about a desktop enthusiast PC tech. There's so much to choose from in that realm and even so with cameras too. So hopefully that answers that question. With that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.